After the Battle of D6 winning the inner metro war against both the Reds and the Fourth Reich, the Spartan Order was hit extremely hard with most of their numbers being decimated whilst defending the bunker. After building up their strength for months expanding their resources and training new recruits, it would be up to the heavily wounded Colonel Miller to find a way to bring order once again to the Spartans and make sure that whilst they might not have the same numbers as before, they still had members of the Spartans who were extremely skilled to take out any threat in front of them. As time went on and Colonel Miller got back walking thanks to his new prosthetic legs, he would be able to bring about a small crew of Spartans that were his trusted members, each with their own specific skills that made them unique and important. But as Artyom ventured out to hunt down this mysterious signal he had heard on his travels, and after experiencing many dreams of life outside of the metros, this crew of Spartans would go on to find Artyom and Anna, believing them to be deserters who had entered a restricted area. Instead, they found that life outside of the metro does exist, and with this new train called the Aurora, Artyom and Nana had found, they could go out and venture the barren lands of the Russian and Kazakhstan countryside. Doing this would come at a cost though, as the whole of the metro run by the invisible watchers would come looking for them, to kill them to make sure they were silent about what they had witnessed, believing they were still at war against the rest of the world. This would set off the group of Spartans on their next adventure, and would become the new faction known as the Aurora Crew, setting out to look for a green land where they could rebuild society and help people along the way. But who are the members of the Aurora Crew? What are their backstories? What roles do they hold within this group? And what is their relationship with others? Well, in today's video, we will be looking at each of the members of the Aurora Crew and answering all of those questions. This is the story behind each of the members of the Aurora Crew within Metro Exodus. We start our list with the ranger known as Stepan. Stepan was born sometime within the early 2000s, and after the Great War of 2013, found himself based within his home station of Smolonskaya. Stepan was not a dominant figure during the years where Artyom was fighting against the Dark Ones, he was still an extremely skilled ranger who was fierce in battle. Stepan was also one of the lucky survivors of the Battle of D6 along with Artyom, Miller, Duke and others. Because of his display of combat skills and survivability, during this battle, it was quite clear to Colonel Miller that Stepan was to be one of his most important rangers, and now with their dwindling numbers, Stepan was to play an important role in their operations from then on out. As Stepan joined the Aurora crew, he would become known as the heavy weapons specialist, and would be seen as the strongest fighter aboard the Aurora, wearing some of the thickest armour out of everyone as well. But despite being seen as this large threatening figure who just could not be taken out, his personality is actually the complete opposite, as Stepan was a hopeless romantic and a true empathetic individual who always wanted to help those in need. This all came to light during the Spartan strips to Volga, as they would go on to meet with a nurse who had travelled from the southern Urals known as Katya. Katya travelled to the Volga with her daughter and her husband, but were immediately captured by the cult running the area known as the Church of the Water Tsar, who were extremely technophobic. Immediately this cult dismantled the locomotive they travelled on, and also sentenced her husband to death, getting him to try and exercise the electric demon within the area. With most of the crew wiped out, Salantis would try desperately to marry Katya, keeping them locked up in the top of the church tower within the heart of the Volga. As the crew of the Aurora arrived, they would go on to save Katya and her daughter, giving Stepan the opportunity to help look after the both of them and get to know them more, as they were the first people he had met from outside of his home in the metro. As the two joined the Aurora crew to look for this new green land, Stepan, Katya and her daughter would get to know each other more and more, with the three of them becoming extremely close. This all progressed even further when out within the Caspian Desert, Stepan would become incapacitated due to dehydration and only survive thanks to Katya's medical help. This helped Stepan to come to the conclusion that life is too short, and they both truly cared for each other. As he recovered, Stepan would go on to propose to Katya, and as they continued to travel, the world would eventually become a married couple, being joined together by Colonel Miller. 
together. Both Catcher and Stepan are incredibly important to the Aurora crew, with Catcher being key for medical knowledge and Stepan being a true battle-hardened warrior, known for being a real threat in a fight. However, behind that facade is a pair of hopeless romantics who just want to enjoy life in their new environment, embracing every new thing they witness on their travels. Tokarev, or how he was previously known as Nikolai, is another one of the Spartans' brave warriors who fought and survived within the Battle of D6. This Spartan was born sometime in the 1990s, but not much is known about his upbringing or where he based himself during the early years. Tokarev is the clear technical expert on board the Aurora, and even before that, becoming known throughout all of the Order as being the man responsible for creating many of the faction's weapons as well as modifications, helping them to be deadly in battle. Battle. This is all helped due to the fact that Tokarev absolutely relishes his job, trying to craft new and inventive weapons and modifications whenever he can to give the Spartans a one-up on their enemies. Because of this, most of Tokarev's time aboard the Aurora is spent at his workshop, crafting equipment and new firearms for his Spartan brothers. It's said by Tokarev himself that the origin of his name was most likely given to him when he was younger, because he owned a Tokarev pistol, most likely a Tokarev TT-33, which was known to many people, including himself, as fantastic in all regards, but only had eight rounds in the magazine. Tokarev also goes on to tell Artyom a story about how he once got into a firefight with some outlaws, which he nearly won, highlighting only one part of Tokarev's origin story. Sadly, during the fight, his gun only had a limited amount of bullets within its small magazine, and as he fired upon the outlaws, he ran out of ammo and got shot, leaving him lying on the floor, nearly bleeding to death. Luckily for him, however, the rangers arrived in time saving him and noticed his skills for weapons craft and made him their main weapon smith. Tokarev would be fundamental to the Aurora Brew being successful in their journey, helping Artyom gain new weaponry that would allow for easy to craft ammunition and weapons that could be used for much more stealth situations such as the Taiha. But on top of that, Tokarev is a man of wisdom and has many stories to tell to not only lighten the mood, but also to help inspire the rest of the crew when all is looking like hope is lost. He is a man of reason, and without him and his workbench, Artyom might not be able to help those he comes into contact with, and ultimately find that green land he saw in his visions. That's not to say Tokarev is always happy, mind you, as when he gets to the Caspian era, he is very vocal about how he hates it out there, because of its heat and landscapes, stating to Artyom, I don't like sand, it's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. Truly a man of culture, and one that knows what he likes and likes what he knows. But at the end of the day, a vital member of the Aurora crew to keep them well stocked on their journey. Unfortunately, Idiot is a character that isn't really as explored as much as the others within the Aurora crew. However, there are some bits of information about him that lets us know who he is and why he is another important asset for the team. Idiot born once again in the 1990s is also another nickname given to him, obviously. However, unlike many of the others who were given their names by others, Idiot actually gave himself the nickname. Why this is the case, it is unknown, but it's an ironic nickname that he has as actually Idiot is one of the smartest members of the Aurora crew, being very aware of history, politics, social statuses, and other things from the pre-war years and modern times. Despite being extremely intelligent, Idiot is also a very calm, quiet individual who sticks to himself most of the time, and when he does speak up in a group, speaks in a philosophical nature, making most of the other members question what he is actually talking about, maybe leading to them to believe that he is actually an idiot because he's not making any sense. One example of this is during the conversation with Sam when the crew leave the Moscow area and venture onward to the Volga. In this conversation, Sam would go on to say that he wonders why they cannot just bring everyone out of the metro as they know it's safe outside. Idiot in response to this would state that the problem is they have nowhere to stay, nowhere to settle, no food, and no way for them to survive in the long run. This short conversation just shows who Idiot really is and how he can realize the complexities of situations before many others, allowing the crew to not jump to conclusions without thinking 
thinking it through. On top of this, Idiot also likes to talk about the all-round complexities of mankind's struggles, as well as the futility of life. He is very good at thinking of the bigger picture when it comes to tactics and helping others. Where some of the rangers like Sam and Stepan would like to just help anyone who supposedly needs it, Idiot would question the situation around them, trying to see if there's any hidden things they have missed, and also look at situations in the long run. Whilst to many his over-analyzing of mankind and life as a whole can be seen as annoying and overly cryptic, Idiot is vital at making sure the Aurora crew don't make rash decisions and sprint into some locations in a desperate attempt to help people. Whilst he might be nicknamed as an idiot, he is the sense of reason for the crew, and without him, many of them might be dead due to their good intentions and inability to look at the bigger picture, or for any hidden things they might have missed. Samuel Taylor was born in the 1980s in San Diego, California, and before the Great War was even on the table, Sam's father convinced him to enlist into the US Marine Corps to give his life some purpose. After a few years out within the Middle East on duty, Sam eventually found himself as a Marine security guard for the American Embassy within Moscow, Russia, until the bombs fell in 2013. As he ventured into the metro, Sam was subjected to hate attacks for being an American citizen as the Russian survivors tried to lynch him. It was all thanks to Miller in the end who stopped them from going ahead with it, and after seeing how tough Sam was, invited him to join the Spartan Rangers, becoming the Colonel's personal guard. For years down within the Metro, Sam was an extremely loyal warrior, owing his life to Miller, and would do anything to protect him and do what he required. During the Battle of D6, Sam was injured just before it, and was not able to fight within it. As the battle went ahead, Miller would lose both of his legs in the process, and because of that, Sam would blame himself for not looking after him, and would stay by his side until he could finally walk again. But as the Spartan crew all got on board the Aurora train and ventured out of Moscow, it dawned on Sam that if life existed still outside, then maybe just maybe, then so did his past life out within California. Maybe his dad was still alive, and if he could find a way to get back to him, he could build up his old life once again in his childhood home. But to do this, he had to support his Spartan brothers and sisters, and after that, only then he could venture over the land to try and get back home. Sam would once again be a vital asset as he had a wider knowledge of the supposed enemy, that being the NATO forces, that were supposedly venturing over the land still. He was also extremely well versed in a variety of military tactics and could get well accustomed to any weapon he picked up. On top of that, he was also seen as the resident chef for the crew, once again bringing all of his skills to light and really helping life within the Aurora to be somewhat bearable. For Sam though, being away from America for so long has meant he fears that he has forgotten how to speak English, and if he does get back to his homeland, would he be welcomed back, or will he not fit in at all? But after the Aurora crew say their final goodbyes to their beloved Colonel Miller, it would be time for Sam to leave their company and finally venture out to seek voyage back home. Will he ever reach his homeland, or will he make sure he puts the needs of others first before his needs? Only time will really tell. But Sam will forever be remembered as one of the most loyal members of the Spartan Order, who worked closely under Colonel Miller's leadership, had a laugh with others, and taught them of his life before the war. Despite not being a Russian native, he is part of their close family on board the Aurora. Born in the 2000s, Aloysia was a simple guard working in Polis before he decided that his life would be worth something more if he joined the Spartan Rangers. Aloysia was a very skilled scout when he joined the Rangers and immediately became useful as many others could not match his skills as he frequently ventured out and survived the irradiated ruins of post-apocalyptic Moscow. Aloysia's personality is reflected in his temperament as he is always looking for excitement. So when the day came with Artyom and Anna finding the Aurora and venturing out into the wider world, Aloysia jumped on this opportunity, believing it was just a new exciting adventure he could go on. He's also an extremely self-obsessed individual, believing that he is a ladies' man, claiming that girls find him irresistible. Aloysia truly proves himself when the crew find themselves within Kazakhstan within Taiga, where he and Artyom are told to scout the area to determine if it is safe to live in or not. Whilst their rail car plunges into the nearby water, both him and Artyom are able to survive 
and reunite later to reveal that the area was indeed not safe to live and was actually soon to be taken out by the mass of radiation heading their way. Aloysia showing his true scouting abilities is able to reveal this to Artyom as well as save him from the forest master and keep the area and its inhabitants safe from its rule. During this trip throughout the forest, Aloysia would go on to meet a member of one of the local tribes known as the Pioneers, Olga. Aloysia would instantly fall for Olga and reveal his feelings for her. And during their journey, if Artyom treats her tribe with respect, Olga would eventually return, sharing her same feelings to Aloysia. But sadly, she must stay with her tribe. Aloysia would state to her he would come back for her sometime soon as they zip line to the Aurora. Whilst Aloysia is an extremely adventurous, blunt individual, he is also as loyal as any of the Aurora crew members, and hopefully one day he will be able to be reunited with Olga once again, maybe within their new green land they have found and together can be joined as one, like Stepan and Katya had before. But on top of that, Aloysia is an incredible scout with phenomenal survival skills that allows the Aurora crew to see what is safe up ahead and what is uninhabitable land, like that of the taiga within Kazakhstan. Sadly, with Duke being one of the youngest members within the Aurora crew, being born in the 2010s, not much is really known about his origin story. But it is most likely that he was born and raised within the Metro, and that is all he has ever known. Like all of the other members of the Aurora crew, Duke found himself surviving the Battle of D6 and soon signed up to be a member of the Scouts within the Rangers. Whether it was because he was one of the surviving members of the D6 group, or because he had now been given this opportunity as a Scout, Duke is always trying to prove himself, volunteering himself during any and all missions that come to the table, and many of the other members of the Order have noted that he is the first to sign up to anything. Duke will do anything to get the job done, even risking his own life multiple times to make sure the goal is achieved. This all came to the forefront in Duke's toughest mission so far, as he accompanies Artyom to invade Salantius' headquarters within the Volga, and get the bridge open for the Aurora to pass through. This job had to be done with subtlety. If cultists would be in taken out left, right and centre, then Duke's life would be on the line as hostility would be at an all-time high. However, taking it slow and steady, Duke and Artyom would be able to convince Salantius to stand down and just open the bridge without any bloodshed. This task would show that Duke is a deserving member of the Spartan Order and the Aurora crew, and without his passion to prove himself in any and all tasks, the crew might struggle to get their missions done. Duke is a clear vision of the next generation of Spartan Rangers and without him, they would eventually die out. They need new blood like Duke, and that is evident in his work. Demir and Sam share one thing in common. Both are not native to Moscow, with Demir being born in the 2000s within Kazakhstan, with one half of his family being from Russia. Eventually traveling to Moscow to escape the bombs, Demir would grow up in the metros, and when he reached maturity would sign up to the rangers, but would always find it hard to fit in seeing himself always as an outsider for not being fully Slavic in ethnicity. This did not stop him from being a loyal member of the rangers and Artyom's end goal. Demir is man with a kind heart and with that empathetic nature comes his role within the crew. Demir is the medic and with this role tends to all of their needs. Demir is probably the most empathetic individual out of all of the crew and on top of that he is also the most humble, always downplaying his achievements stating that a lot of it was just down to luck or circumstances and never acknowledging his own skills. But with the crew finding the Aurora and venturing out like Sam, Demir is hopeful that on their journey he could find his ancestors ancestors out there and get to know more about his culture at the same time. This all happens when the crew reaches the Caspian Desert. Being one of the only members of the crew unaffected by the heat and the coarse irritating sand that gets everywhere, Demir would help Artyom on his journey throughout the area, finding himself questioning his loyalty between the local enslaved population of his people and the Aurora Spartans. As the crew eventually got to the barren of the land, it would be down to the crew's actions that would determine Demir's future. If the slaves are still 
still in need of help, Demir will realize that's his job to help save them and will remain in the area. If on their travels, Artyom and the crew are able to help the slaves, then Demir will continue on to help the crew on their journey. In the end, like with Sam, Demir just wants to find who he really is, explore his people's past, find what his origins are, and to find a place where he truly fits in. Is that with the Rangers, or is that within the Caspian Desert? Only he can really decide. But it's become clear to many within the crew that Demir is one of the kindest individuals that will always put others before himself. Self. One of the oldest members of the Aurora crew is the non-Spartan ranger known as Yermak, who was born in either the 1960s or 1970s. Yermak before the Great War worked within the Metro as a member of personnel, working on the ring line with Yermak stating it was extremely boring. For years Yermak wanted to quit his job and looked at getting one within a real railroad so he could go out and see all of Russia. His wife however refused this, stating that if he even thought about quitting and going for this job, she would not let him sleep with her for months on end. As the bombs fell however his wife and son were killed with Yermak and his daughter surviving since they were in the metro station anyway as she had come to see him work after she had been at school. Now in the new life of the post-war metro Yermak needed to survive somehow and with that signed up to work for the Hansa running a train for them on the surface but eventually he would go on to find the mass graves of all the people the Hansa had executed who were just trying to enter Moscow. Yermak could not do any anything during this however, as he was fearful they would kill his daughter to keep him working. But eventually, sadly for Yermak, his daughter died of TB, and now without any fears of them having anything on him, could hit back against them and finally escape. This was all thanks to Artyom invading the Hansa area, seeking out the Aurora train and using Yermak's skills were able to start it up and get out of the area away to safety. The Aurora crew would be in debt to Yermak as his wide range of engineering skills were able to keep the crew on their journey and get over any technical problems they faced on their journey. Without Yermak, who knows where the rebel Spartans would be now and to this date he is a vital member, if not the key member for their journey out within the greater world. <laughs> Crest is just another member of the Aurora crew who is just a friend of the Spartans. Born in the late 1990s or early 2000s, Crest lived in a small town called Kadir, and when the bombs fell was luckily spared from the world's destruction. But with nuclear winter moving in, Crest knew he had to move out, and with that knowledge repaired an old truck and moved south. After surviving a few winters, Crest quickly realized it was impossible to survive alone, and quickly joined together with a variety of characters and groups. Eventually, Crest got to Astrakhan, where the weather conditions were much better than where he was previously. But unfortunately bandits roamed this area capturing people and selling them as slaves. Crest did encounter the bandits at one point, but was lucky enough to survive and escape their clutches, posing as a bandit himself to make sure he didn't stand out. All was going well even if life wasn't that great for him, but eventually he was encountered by Salantius and the fanatics as he arrived within the Volga. Crest, who was known for working with technology, was instantly persecuted executed by the fanatics who branded him a heretic, taking away his rail car and despite not capturing him, forced him into hiding. With this he was able to set up multiple outposts where he could take shelter and quickly move on if the cult found him, also developing a friendship with Katya and her daughter who were also victims of the cult. Eventually he moved to the top of a crane, making sure no one could get to him there and set up his main base. Eventually as the Aurora crew showed up, it would be Crest who would go on to help them in their venture forward, highlighting where bandit outposts were as well as resources and Salantius's main base of operations. With Crest's help he was granted access to the train and became a welcomed addition to the crew, putting to use all of his skills to help them survive in their travels. Whilst not the most adventurous story out of all of the crew members, Crest's story just goes to show how difficult it was to live out within the wilderness on their own. Highlighting Idiot's point about how without shelter and food it was impossible to live out within the wildlands of Russia and its surrounding countries. And finally to finish this list off is the leader of this group of survivors along with his daughter, Colonel Miller. 
and Anna. Not much is really known about Miller's background, but it was said that before the war, Miller was a married man who had Anna whilst he was a soldier. The stress of being a soldier and a new parent, however, put a lot of stress on the two, and because of it, both became heavily addicted to alcohol. Eventually, due to the never-ending stress, Miller's wife, Anna's mother, would commit suicide with a bottle of poison leaving him alone to be a single parent. With this, Miller changed his ways, giving up drinking and taking care of Anna more than he had ever done before. After the Great War, both Miller and Anna moved down into the metro stations and because of Miller's military background became a dominant figure down within Paulus Station. As time progressed on and the metro world entered the year of 2033, Miller would become the head of the Rangers of the Order and ran the security of Polis. It would be this year where he would help the young boy of Artyom take out the new threat of the Dark Ones, the supposed next stage in human evolution, who were seen to be taking people out all over the different stations. At this same time, they would locate the mythical bunker of D6 and clear out the horrific biomass that lingered there, giving Miller a new base of operations to set up his rangers in, to really enable them to become a dominant force within the whole of the metro station with easy access to any station they needed. After the Dark Ones had been supposedly wiped out, civil war broke out and Miller was in command again, trying to make sure no harm came to innocence. But word of a new Dark One spread throughout, and Anna was tasked with helping Artyom seek this one out and stopping it once and for all. Throughout their journey together, they would become close after first having a very distant relationship. But due to them saving each other's lives at times, Anna and Artyom would come together and form a close relationship. For Miller, however, D6 was under attack and needed defending after a rogue member of the Rangers told the Reds of its location. During this huge battle, Artyom and Miller would fight side by side, but Miller would have both his legs blown up during the battle, causing him to not be able to walk at all. But thanks to the Dark One's help, the remaining Spartans would be safe and Artyom could return to his new love, Anna, and Miller could be taken to seek medical help. As the months passed, Miller objected to the relationship of his daughter and Artyom, as he felt Artyom's new goal of venturing outside of the metro was foolish and was going to get them both killed. But as Artyom ignored that advice, he would go on to reveal that the ones in charge of the metro had been lying to them and were blocking anyone from venturing outside. Miller and the Rangers' enforcement helped this as well, stopping anyone from going past a certain point. But getting to the Aurora and finding Artyom and Anna, who had revealed this huge secret, Miller had to decide to abandon his rulers of the Invisible Watchers and his Rangers of the Metro to venture out and see the world, or stay defending the station and abandon his daughter and son-in-law. Eventually, Miller joined the Aurora and set up the crew venturing out to hopefully seek the true Russian government believed to be located within the Ark. But as the Ark was not what it seemed, Miller started to lose hope in this plan, and things got even worse when his daughter started to die after being exposed to toxic gas in Volga. There was only one cure, and that was located within Novosibirsk, the heavily radiated city three times deadlier than Moscow. Miller had to do this though, for his daughter's life, he had to. But as they luckily found the cure for Anna, Colonel Miller used his one and only radiation medication on his new son-in-law, saving his life in the process. But it came at a price. Miller was to die in the process. In the end, Anna and Artyom could be together again, both surviving this long, brutal journey over Russia and the other countries. But Colonel Miller had given his life for them to do so and eventually find that green land. A true man of honor who was well respected, had taught everyone what he knew and on this long journey had learned what it meant to view life in a different way. Whilst attacking Artyom for having this foolish ambition, he realized it was better than being stuck in the metro and here they could build a new life together. Given his last piece of energy to save his son-in-law, Colonel Miller would go down as a true hero. And if the members of all of the Aurora crew we have talked about today can rebuild, they can all be thankful that they were led there by their incredible Colonel, Colonel Miller of the Spartan Order. And that is the full list of the members of the Aurora crew.
And there we go, that is all of the known lore behind the characters of the Aurora crew of Metro Exodus. I do want to do a larger video of Colonel Miller later comparing him to his book self, so I just skimmed some of the details for now, otherwise this video would be absolutely huge. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please make sure you give it a like, check out my other lore videos in the description below, leave a nice comment and subscribe if you haven't already, and if you really loved this video or channel, why not check me out on Patreon or as a YouTube channel member for early access to these videos, as well as them being completely ad-free. And speaking of, I'd like to thank my supporters real quick. Big thanks to our small fish guys, our big fishers, Christopher, AVP man, last persona user, and Arto Krem, our sharks, Wow Such Gaming, and Jason X117, our huge Megalodon, Sinus, and Jacob Garcia, and our absolutely legendary sawfish, Shadow SGT. Also, big shout out to our YouTube channel members, our wise ones, Jambu and Fiery Italian. All your support means the world to me and means I can make these videos for you guys, so thank you all so much again. But that is all for now. Thanks for watching once again, and I shall see you all in the next one. Cheers.